Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a look at the concept of the exponential equivalence of using exponential fractions rather than radical signs. So for example, when we have the square root of 3a, that can be written as the quantity 3a raised to the one-half power that is essentially the same thing. And so to take a look at that, notice we can now separate these two. We can write this as 3 to the 1 half power times 8 to the 1 half power. And then the exponential equivalent means that 3 to the 1 half power can be written as the square root of 3, and 8 to the 1 half power, which can be written as the square root of a. And then we can multiply them together and get back what we originally started with. So we're back full circle. And that's what we mean by the exponential equivalence. We can use a radical symbol or we can use fractional exponents. The same when we have the cube root, we can use one-third, or the fourth root, we can use one-fourth instead of using the radical sign, and it's exactly the same thing. It has exact same mathematical meaning. Now, if we're going to use the exponential equivalence, notice what we can do. We can now apply that exponent to each of the exponents inside the parentheses here. So instead of writing the cube root of 4x squared, we can write 4x squared to the one-third power. That means the same thing. And then we have 4 to the 1 3rd power times x squared to the 1 3rd power. We multiply exponents, we get 2 thirds. And then realizing that 4 is the same as 2 squared, we can also get 2 to the 2 thirds and x to the 2 thirds. So that's the exponential equivalence of what we started with. Or what we can do here is we take the fourth root of 16xy to the fifth, which is the quantity 16xy to the fifth to the 1 4th power. We can then realize that 16 is 2 to the 4th, and y to the 5th can be written as y to the 4th times y to the 1st power. And then notice when we apply the exponential here, 1 4th, 2 to the 4th, multiply times, or raised to the 1 4th power, we multiply the exponents together, we simply get 2. Same with y to the 4th, raised to the 1 4th power, we get y, and x to the 1 4th power is x to the 1 4th, y to the 1 4th power is y to the 1 4th, and then we realize that we have a 2 and a y, and the fourth root of x times y. When we can take these and put them back inside a radical sign. And so you can see that's, again, an example of the exponential equivalence. So now taking a look at these two examples right here, let's go ahead and simplify them using the same rules. So this can be written as a quantity 27, x to the fourth, y to the fifth, raised to the second, not second power, but the one-half power, because raising something to the one-half power is the same thing as taking the square root of something. Now, 27 can be written as 3 to the third power. We have x to the fourth, y to the fifth, all raised to the one-half power. And now let's go ahead and apply the exponential. So we have 3 to the three-halves power, x to the four over two power, and y to the 5 over 2 power. Now what we could do here is simplify some of these things. So this can be written as 3 times 3 to the 1 half power. Here we have x squared, and here we have y squared times y to the 1 half power. So I've actually separated the whole exponent from the fractional exponent. Then I can rewrite this as 3x squared y squared and then the portions that still have a fractal exponent can be, put, pla can be placed back inside the radical, the square root of 3 times y. So 3 to the 1 half power, y to the 1 half power can be written as the square root of 3 times y. And then we can pull out the 3, the x squared, and the y squared and write it in front. And that is the exact same thing. Taking a look over here, let's go ahead and put the equal sign over here. So we have the cube root of... Well, that can be written as the same thing to the one-third power. So we have 32x cubed y to the 8. Let me make sure that looks like a 3. Okay, 32 can be written as 2 to the 5th power. So this is 2 to the 5th power, x to the 3rd power, y to the 8th power, to the one-third power. And then you can say, okay, this is equal to 2 to the 3rd power times 2 to the 2nd power. This is then x to the third power, y to the sixth power times y to the second power. Notice that I've separated the exponents in such a way that any multiple of three comes out. 
and then I raise all this to the one-third power. Now I can apply this exponent here. So this is equal to 2 cubed to the one-third power is simply equal to 2. x cubed to the one-third power is equal to x. y to the sixth raised to the one-third power is y squared because 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then what I have left is the following. So I can go ahead and put that in parentheses still. I have 2 squared and y squared to the one-third power. And then, if I want to, I can put this back into a radical format. So this could be written as 2xy squared times the cube root of 2 squared, which is 4. Y, squ y squared to the one-third power is simply the cube root of y squared. And that would then be the simplified form. I got to this same result by simply first converting to the fractional exponent, multiplying exponents out, and then going back to the radical form. And that is how it's done.